and today we are going to talk about a term which sounds like it's familiar the word circumlocution because in the last two videos we have talked about the speech act theory and certain terms that are used in that theory so we talked about locution we talked about elocution we talked about locutionary elocutionary perlocutionary etc so as you see the word uh, locution which uh, re keeps occurring in all these words and it also appears in the word circumlocution which is a topic of today's video and now the question is is it part of the speech act theory and then the simple answer is no it is not but let's uh, let's dive into it the word circumlocution uh, comes from middle english circumlocution i don't know even if it was pronounced circumlocution i don't know how to pronounce middle english but it sounds like french because there's a c-i-o-n at the end but it comes from circumlocution in latin circumlocutio which consists of two parts that's the important part circum which is around and then locutio which is a speech which comes from loci which is to speak so what is the meaning of circumlocution according to the longman dictionary it's the practice of using too many words to express an idea instead of saying it directly talking around something beating around the bush I have a video about the Worfian hypothesis. Uh, if you remember, you can pause this video and go watch it. But to spoil the video for you, the Worfian hypothesis argues that the language we use affects the, the way we relate to the external world in one or more ways. In this case, for example, if we have a particular concept in mind, we create a word for it, if that concept is important enough. So you can imagine two languages, languages A and B, and in language A, they have a word for a concept. In language B, they do not have a word for the concept. Therefore, in language B, if the speakers want to talk about that concept, of, of course, they can imagine the concept, but they don't have a word to discuss the concept. And what they do is they will engage in circumlocution. They will, they will talk around the word. They will try to describe it instead of mentioning it. So that's what circumlocution in this technical sense is. Yeah, there's different ways the language you speak affects the way we think. The point is, if you have those or versus if you do not have those, you will conceive the word and express the word and relate to the word and interact with the world and talk about the world cognitively and culturally differently. In the same way, in the case of circumlocution, you have to beat around the bush when you don't have a word. There's, there's more to circumlocution than that, because imagine somebody has aphasia. There's actually a kind of aphasia in which you can remember names it's a particular kind of aphasia. So instead of saying, I want to eat an apple, you just say, I would like to have that round fruit that is red or green on the outside and juicy when you bite into it. <laughs> it's you call apple, and I don't remember the name of. I'm going to the store. That's what you would normally say, right? You want to go to the store to buy something. But a person with aphasia might say, I need to go to the place where you can buy groceries, household items, and other things you might need. And also, in this case, the person has replaced the word store with this long description. So this is also called a circumlocution. But circumlocution is something people do not because they forget or they have this speech problem, but it could happen because they don't know the word. So the word exists in English, for example, and you're a learner of English. Imagine somebody doesn't know the word doctor. And then, then he would say, a person you go to when you are sick. The word circumlocution can be a technical word to describe other situations. 
there's this uh, thing that we do when we write something from a different language what is that thing called oh yeah 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 that's called translation <laughs> so when we do translation and imagine there is a word in language a that you do not have in language b and you're translating from language a to language b there's a gap in the vocabulary so how do you handle that gap Circumlocution may be a tactic to handle lexical gaps, that's called a lexical gap in the target language and the translation of the otherwise untranslatable words. So there are numerous words in different languages that are considered untranslatable due to their unique cultural or linguistic contexts. These words often carry nuanced meanings that are challenging to capture in a single word or phrase in another language. I can give you some examples. Like in German, there's a, there's a word for this feeling of joy or pleasure uh, that you derive from other people's misery and misfortune. That word is called Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude is a word that doesn't exist in English, therefore in English uh, we have borrowed that word from German. So how do you handle circumlocution or how do you avoid circumlocution in translation? One way to handle it is to just borrow the foreign word into your language. Last but not least is actually what we started with and that's uh, when people get wordy instead of instead of saying something directly they just beat around the bush and they provide long explanations and that happens for example when some person instead of saying I don't know says I lack the requisite knowledge to provide a definitive answer have you have you seen these people they just complicate the way they want to say something that you could otherwise express very in simple terms but they don't you could complicate your language intentionally I could say I need to go to the bathroom I could just say I require a momentary respite to attend to a personal bodily function which is quite funny uh, so this is a joking example of the situation but um, but people actually do this so you get the idea and that is also called the circumlocution so to give you a recap there's this word circumlocution which is talking around something. Uh, thank you for watching this video and uh, I'll see you next time. See you next video and take care.